During the events of the Dolby incident, you end up in the good old bayou running from a demented family hellbent on not just completely screwing with you, but also attempting to end you. Your original task was to find your wife and get out of Dodge. After she attacks you and runs off, you find that you have been captured by the patriarch of the family, Jack, and are sitting down to a home-cooked meal. After your escape, which requires Jack to actually just completely and almost seemingly allow this to happen, you make your way through the home with more and more evidence that begins to crop up that something may be amiss besides the fact that they did just kind of cut off your leg and then you escaped. But in the basement, there's a thick, tarry substance that coats the walls and spawns molded out of it. So what exactly is going on with this stuff, and how does it affect humans, and what are the consequences of said infection? Well, in this episode, let's find out what exactly is the mold infection from Resident Evil 7. So let's start with a little bit of history to determine where this stuff actually originates from. The mold was developed by a criminal company known as The Connections. This was a joint project between Albert Wesker's HCF and the connections. The bioweapon is technically deemed a success, seeing as it has the ability to turn enemies into allies and hostiles into servants, which considering the cost of actually keeping people alive who are hostile to you with food and hiring guards to, you know, guard said prisoner, completely changing their minds to what you would want would significantly decrease this expenditure. But these people are not really the ultimate goal for the use of the BOW, or bioorganic weapon. They are simply the outcome of the BOW being used. To initially make this BOW, a human embryo is is used prior to it entering its fourth stage of development. This usually would take place between the 38th to 40th week of development. At this point, the mold is able to entirely inhabit these cells from a very early point on in the person's life, and they are able to assimilate into the body quite nicely. From here, as the cells continue dividing, they take the mold with it, and it is incorporated into every facet of their body. From this point, the human is always female and will be artificially aged to the appearance of a 10-year-old girl. But why a 10-year-old girl? Well, in normal societies, this is the most unsafe suspecting form. Children are not typically seen as threats, but they actually are massive threats to your wallets, but this may inspire adults around them to interact with them in non-threatening ways, and in some cases, would actually lead to that child being taken in by, say, a family in the bayou. This particular youngin ended up in the great state of Louisiana, and she is known as Evelyn. She is what is called a E-type, or E-001. She, above others, shows remarkable abilities beyond those of what is deemed normal, but most importantly, she seemed to be able to actually control the mold in general, and those that would become infected with this ailment would quickly fall under her influence and be robbed of their natural compulsions and thoughts. It would seem that shortly after the infection of a person, they would begin to see her all over even though she wasn't really there. These hallucinations would beckon for the person to bend their will to her for their companionship, and really all the way up to self-mutilation to show their willingness to comply with her requests. These type of hallucinations would indicate a schizophrenic state in a lot of cases, and those exhibiting symptoms of infection would go on to actually hear Evelyn's voice voice. despite not being audible to any other person near them. Over time, between seeing Evelyn and hearing her voice despite her not really being there would have a profound effect on the mind. The natural barriers that keep us sane and consciously thinking for ourselves would begin to break down. Reality would be thrown into question for an individual as their grasp on it would begin to falter. Eventually, these barriers would be overcome completely and she could continue brainwashing this person until they completely submit. So apart from this, this is basically the basic origins of this infection. This is a BOW that was brought on a boat that ended up crashing in the bayou, then she completely took over a family as she has a natural strange compulsion to seek out parents. However, without her maintenance doses of medicine to keep her looking young, her body rapidly ages as seen in the house when you encounter the grandmother in really just sections where she shouldn't be. The little girl you see is a mental projection brought on by the mold and the power Evelyn has over it. But you are here for actual infection knowledge, so let's get to that because there is some juicy science in it. During the infection process, there are three main stages each with varying degrees of danger to you should you be exposed to the cure. Due to the mold being extremely resistant to treatment in general and quite contagious, it is an absolute detriment to a person and those located around them. But like all good stories, we have to start from the beginning to understand the process in the body. There's nothing quite like the ability of the body to heal. In some circumstances, humans have been known to heal from wounds so grievous that they were assumed to have been completely out of the game. There are records during the Napoleonic Wars of soldiers who fell in battle due to a wound to the abdomen. In some cases, like with a 
a specific soldier, he was assumed to have been KIA. A day after the soldier was basically left on the battlefield, he woke back up to someone trying to steal his shoes, and he ended up walking home and surviving the injury despite everyone around him designating him as gone. But for us normies, when we get injured, our bodies go into panic mode and begin attacking any infection that may have entered the body, but also begin rapid cellular mitosis in an effort to seal up the wound to stop any other invaders from breaching the body. Never has this been more pronounced than after the initial infection stage of the mold. When a person becomes exposed to this disease, the fungal filaments will enter the body through a wound or ingestion, or in some cases, even the lungs, and begin digesting nutrients from the body to propagate its own survival. It should be noted, however, that it is not ingesting the body at this point. The human cells are still in their normal form and are not too afflicted by the presence of this mold. In fact, for the cells, it's more business as usual. But when it comes to healing, it is no longer business as usual and is actually extremely beneficial to the host. In all honesty, if you could stop the mold past the initial infection process, you would actually have a pretty good answer to any danger that lurks in everyday life to our meat suits. During this stage, let's say you lose an arm or a leg, right? Well, in our current understanding of medical technology, it is possible to reattach a limb, but nothing is guaranteed. Nerve damage could be quite prevalent and just lead to a useless limb that doesn't actually function. An infection may develop and you would actually have to have the extremity amputated anyways, or your body may link back up correctly with it and then everything's okay. Really, it's just a roll of the dice even with our best efforts. But compared to like 100 years ago, this is actually pretty an amazing godsend because in reality, things uh, you could get like a splinter back then and lose an entire limb. But with this infection, it is completely different. When the mold filaments pierce through your system and begin to mingle amongst your cells, they end up piercing the cellular membranes. On each of these cells are receptors and co-receptors. They are essentially how the cells communicate with one another and also how the DNA of a cell can be made aware of a situation developing outside of the membrane. With filaments in the cell itself, it is also interacting with these receptors. These receptors are known as the ERK pathway. The ERK pathway is responsible for, you know, basically cellular mitosis. When a wound is detected in particular, the cell will begin dividing quickly to bridge this gap. The ERK pathway will keep this going until it hits a natural limit and then stop. Otherwise, it would just end up being really more cancer than anything. The interesting thing about this, though, is that the body has varying cells which may or may not actually divide. Take, for instance, neural tissue. Not really known to divide. Nerve damage can heal, but like I said, usually nerves are not known to divide or repair this way. However, with this filament affecting the ERK pathway and the DNA itself, it can override this static cell. You see, every cell in your body possesses similar DNA to one another, and everyone is capable of division. In fact, there is a study being done right now to figure out how to unlock the dormant genes within us to regrow limbs like lizards can. Because after all, evolution is building upon what's already there, and we have identified the section of coding that would be responsible for letting us regrow lost limbs. So basically, don't let me down, CRISPR. But all right, enough with going down the rabbit hole. Essentially, when you lose a limb, if you are able to grab that limb, the mold will actually reconnect it and fill in the gap, leading to no ill effects to the filaments forcing cellular mitosis. Even with this, however, it can entirely regrow lost limbs, it seems, utilizing the coding information within the DNA. But this would probably take a little longer, and it seems as though there are limits. Not everyone possesses this healing ability. For instance, Jack Baker had a much higher healing ability than anyone else in the family, and as such, was able to keep coming back, whereas others were more easily calcified. The mid-stage of infection is when the costs begin to outweigh the benefits. As the mold progresses through your system, the healing may become more pronounced, but then you'll start to hear voices that aren't really there and see a little girl materialize and dematerialize in front of you. This is actually the beginning of the desired effects the BOW was meant to do. The mold is beginning to reach the brain. When this happens, a person will quickly fall under the sway of the E-type asset. But how might this be possible? As the mold filament enters the neural tissue on a cellular basis, it would likely have a direct effect on neurochemical release within the mind as well as actual structures within the brain. It is noted that the ego is the first thing attacked when a person enters this particular part of the infection process. The anterior cingulate cortex and the frontoinsular cortex appears to be the areas where the ego originates from. The cells in this area may be attacked and destroyed leading to less communication from this particular structure of the brain. As a result, the brain continues to function, but with these neural pathways broken, the sense of self is lost and the person may become more open to suggestion by an outside force. The chemical, such as dopamine and serotonin, may be released in mass leading to schizophrenic states, which is noted to be the possible cause of actually hearing these voices. When this happens, it would lead to hallucinations of the person and further breaking of their grasp on reality. However, during this stage, it's not all detriment. Grievous wounds inflicted upon these infected will be almost instantly healed or completely ignored. They do not really seem to have that much of a profound effect on the body, and it quickly overcomes the injury with little difficulty. At this stage, it can also 
also increase an infected person's strength and enhance most of their senses. Perhaps with their humanity taken away, they become more animalistically driven in the process. The final stage of infection is usually based upon what has happened to this person. In typical Resident Evil fashion, the more damage a host absorbs, the more mutations seem to spiral out of control, like my boy Dr. Birkin, for instance. In this stage, the mold is reacting to physical damage brought upon the meat suit by outside influences, so those that lose like half their body or receive significant damage to their brain may have the mold completely rearrange themselves to better serve the mold. When this happens, a more grotesque form is chosen and the human form will be lost forever. These infections range from being able to control bugs, to having ridiculous healing abilities during a fight, to being larger than a building. But all of them will increase the infected strength in an effort to preserve the mold. Presumably at this point, the human cells are still very much so in there, but the mold now seems to compose most of the biomass. But luckily for you, there is a treatment available for this infection, but it is a time-sensitive matter. In the early stages, the cure can be made by an E-type body tissue and be administered with little detriment to the host as the infection has not afflicted every cell. But when this happens, the fungicidal serum goes in and it will calcify the mold filaments, destroying it in the process. However, this is the early stages. If administered too late and the filament have had time to completely run amok in the body, the calcification will lead to calcification of that individual. Obviously, this would lead to their quick end with the complete destruction of their cells under most circumstances. It appears, however, in relation to Evelyn, when this E necrotoxin is administered, it was not able to completely overcome what she was. Instead, she was broken down to a molecular level and reformed into the mold that surrounded her. When this happened, she was recreated into a towering behemoth, presumably using most, if not all, the mold in the house to give her her biomass required to reach such size. This did, however, weaken her enough to allow her body to not be able to recover from physical damage, and Ethan was able to administer a hit that would cause complete calcification of her body. The mold is by far less aggressive than the T-virus, however, it is still quite detrimental to small population groups and potentially large population groups should it escape containment. With its ability to heal people, it would have quite a few medical applications, if you know, not for the whole mind control by a 10-year-old child thing, but the mold in general does seem to have biomass effects similar to like the corruption from Dead Space, which I will be going into in other episodes as we explore Resident Evil 7. But anyhow, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed. I am writing this on December 24th, so I'm attempting to get it out by the 26th. So Merry Belated Christmas to everyone, and there are a few other holidays during this time frame, so happy holidays to everyone else. And we don't know what the future holds, and I don't have 2020 vision, but in, uh, I don't know, seven days I will. And that's your last dad joke for 2019. Anyhow, I will drop my Twitter, Discord, Patreon, and second channel info in the description. Also, I would like to thank a few of my patrons. Huge shout out to It's Not a Spoon, our lone astronaut. I also want to thank our scientists, Freedom Units 44, Skilt, and Trey Windenall. Thank you guys, and to the rest of my patrons, I thank you as well. Your help goes a long way, and I really do appreciate it, especially during this time, for you guys keeping your patronage. It's just been really cool. All right, so in 2020, uh, I will be covering movies as well. Y'all finally broke me on that point, and I will try to do Evolve, because there's one mad lad that's been asking me for two years now, and I'm going to attempt 40k, because apparently there's a place just right down the road for me. It's like a store, but it's only 40k, and I had no idea it existed. Anyways, so just give me some time to work on that. All right, that does it for me. Thanks for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one.